This video is sponsored by the Day Day Up carrying case for Steam Deck. When I first got my Steam controller, one of the very first games that I tried setting up was Guild Wars 2. So when Guild Wars 2 came to Steam, that was a game that I decided I was gonna try and set up and get a good control scheme for in order to share with all of you. Now, I have been working on this for a while, probably about five hours of fiddling around with this to try and get it right over the past few weeks. And that means that a lot of times when I was shooting B-roll for my videos, I was using Guild Wars 2 and people have been asking me over and over, what is that game that you're playing? Because I've never seen it before. And B, I love Guild Wars 2. How does it play on deck? Did you make a control scheme for it? Well, yes, I have a control scheme for it and I have been working on this for a while and that's what this video is. So let's get into it. This video is sponsored by the Day Day Up carrying case for Steam Deck. I recently did a video about Project Kill Switch and that's not really a case. It's really more of a shell for the Steam Deck. And a lot of comments in that video were people that were saying, I like the default case for the Steam Deck, but what I wish it had was a way to carry more stuff with you. And that's where this case comes into play. Now, this is definitely more bulky, and I'm not really a huge fan of the bulk, but what you're trading in bulk, you are getting in storage. This carries a lot of stuff, and it's fairly well designed. So first off, the shell itself is perfectly form-fitted to the Steam Deck, but where the original one left the power brick and anything else on the outside under an elastic strap that would eventually get loose over time, all of that stuff is stored within a compartment inside. In addition to that, you have a soft screen protector on the inside of this, and you even have a bunch of SD card slots where you can put a bunch of SD cards, almost like a Chewbacca bandolier of SD cards that are in your Steam Deck case. And it even has a little spot where you can put maybe some wireless headphones if you don't wanna put them in the bottom. The base of the case is a hard foam and that foam is fairly thick, which means it's going to protect your Steam Deck from drops and impact, which is very important. The top is molded for the Steam Deck perfectly, so the joysticks fit in there just fine. And uh, it zips up nice and secure. It's got a nice handle that you can carry and you can throw this in your bag or carry it on its own. Overall, I think that this is a very good deal. So if you're interested in picking up the Day Day Up carrying case for the Steam Deck, check out my link in the description down below. Not only will you be getting yourself an awesome case for the Steam Deck, but you'll also be supporting the channel. All right, let's get to the tutorial. All right, let's check out Guild Wars 2 on the Steam Deck. I'm gonna go through my control options and I'm gonna go fairly quickly. Uh, first off, how does Guild Wars 2 work on the Steam Deck? Well, number one, you wanna make sure that you have action cam turned on. So in the settings, you're gonna come down here to control options. You're gonna scroll down to camera controls, which is down here. And right here, I've got it set up with a slash. So once you've got that set up, then you're going to uh, make a radial menu for your left trackpad and set one of those buttons to be the slash command. If you wanna know how to make radial menus, I've got another video that takes you all the way through the step-by-step -step process of making the radial menus. I didn't wanna duplicate that in this video because a lot of you have already seen that video. But if you haven't, there's a link in the description down below to, to show you how to set those up. All right, now that we've got that, let me show you my left stick. The left stick is set up to do WASD because this is a mouse and keyboard style game. Uh, but it's also set up to dodge and it's set up to auto run uh, depending on how you interact with the joystick. So how do I do that? Well, it's actually really, really easy. I'm going to go into st uh, Steam and uh, I'm going to go to my joystick and my left joystick you can see is a D-pad. I've got this set up to an eight-way overlap. It's pretty much the defaults and then WASD on up, down, left, right. And then a left stick click is a V key and a left stick click with a long press is the R key. In order to get that extra command, all you have to do is go to your left stick click, click on the gear, 
and hit add extra command. Once you hit add extra command, it'll give you this, set it to the R key, which is the auto run button, and then click on the gear. Uh, this will say regular press and you'll come down and hit long press. Now the way that this works is if I'm moving forward and I click and hold, it will hit the R button and I will be auto running either until I click and hold again, which will stop it, or if I am clicking and holding and I wanna just stop, I can just flick the stick in any direction and my character will stop moving and it will turn off auto run. If I am trying to dodge, no matter which direction I am pushing, if I'm pushing back, I will dodge backwards. If I'm pushing to the left, I will dodge. Well, that was a bad move because there was a tree in the way at that point. Uh, so as soon as my energy fills back up, I will dodge to the right. There we go, I dodge to the right. You can see that I did a quick little dodge. All right, that takes care of my left stick. Let's move over to my right stick. My right stick is camera controls. Pretty much I just set this up to be a mouse. I'm gonna show you my layout for that, or not my layout, but my settings. So I'm gonna to go to my joystick, right joystick. It's set up as a joystick mouse. I'll explain why I have right mouse click set up to be right there in a minute. But first off, I'm going to click on the gear and you can see I've lowered my mouse sensitivity to 145 and I've got my vertical scale turned down to 79. I just find that this fits pretty well for me. Everything else is set to default for my right stick. Now, why do I have the right mouse click on this stick? Well, it's so that when I bring up my inventory, which let's bring up my inventory right here. If let's say I wanna right click on that, well, I've got my left click or my, my left trigger to do something else so that's not going to work and i can left click on stuff which will pick it up but i can't right click so i just set that to be a right click which brings up that menu and i can then use it pick one of these things hit accept and that gives me access to right click for something that i wasn't otherwise using i'll go ahead and close this and it brings me back to my action cam automatically turns on okay you'll see that i i'm also using my right trackpad to be the mouse as well. Let me show you how that works. I've got my trackpad, uh, set that to be as a mouse. Uh, my right trackpad click is a left mouse click that allows me to interact with my inventory and my right touch double press is set to an F key. So you set that to whatever you want. I've got it set to F, I click there. It'll say regular press, set that to be a double press and it's just double touch, really, which is really, really handy. So you come over here to somebody that you might wanna interact with, and it brings up a little menu in Guild Wars 2 to say, do you wanna to talk to them? If I just double tap that, it interacts with them, and I don't have to waste that button on some other button. All right, so that takes me through all of the basics. I've got my, my menu items over here on this radial menu. I've got WASD right here. I've got mouse control here and here. So how do I do all of my buttons down here on the bottom? It's actually very, very simple. I kind of copied what Final Fantasy XIV does. So I've got it set up with action layers. An action layer copies your overall controls and then layers on top of it new commands. So I've got an action layer called left, which will change a, uh, X, A, B, Y to one, two, three, four. I've got an action layer called right, which changes X, A, B, Y to seven, eight, nine, 10. And then my D-pad is F1, F2, F3, and F4. And if I, this character doesn't have an F5 ability, but if they had an F5 ability, I have that set to double tap the up button. So how do I set that up? I've got another video that goes into very detailed uh, how to set that up, but I'm gonna go very quick in this. So if you need a little bit more detail, check out my other video on action layers. Come down to action sets and under default, you're gonna click on this gear icon and you'll add a layer. You'll name it whatever you want. I'm gonna name this one V because just real quick, quickly showing you how to do it. And I'm going to remove that layer because I don't actually need it. But I've already done that once for left and for right. How do you access those? Well, all you have to do is you can see up here, it says default action set. If I hit the right bumper, I can change that to the left action set. So I'm gonna go back up here to my buttons. And you see that none of the buttons have anything except for Y is my jump key. If I hit the right bumper, it's gonna switch over to my left action set. And then I've set ABXY 
to one, two, three, and four. If I hit that again, it switches over to my right action set, which is seven, eight, nine, and 10. So how do I actually activate those in the game? Under my default action set, I've set my left, my, yeah, my right trigger to a hold action set layer, right. I'm gonna show you how that works. I go in here under action sets, hold action set layer, and that says left, I'm gonna switch that over to right. Now here it says display name when changed and beep when changed, that never works for me, but this is beta software. So, you know, your mileage may vary. I've got that set to action set layer right. And then this one is hold action set layer left. I do that exactly the same way on the other side. Before we go back into it, I'm gonna show you another trick that I have. Under gyro, I've got it set to be a mouse, okay? I've got the activator for that to be a left trigger full pull. So when I pull the trigger to activate my action set layer, it also at the same time turns on the gyro, giving me the ability to aim even if I don't have my left thumb on the uh, joystick or on the trackpad. Then what I've done is I've made a mode shift you just come down here, hit create mode shift. It duplicates that. I have exactly the same thing, but instead of my left trigger full pull, I've got it on right trigger full pull. So either trigger, whether I'm using the buttons on the left side of my uh, health or on the right side of my health, both triggers will activate my gyro so I can aim without having my thumb on these two devices. All right, so I'm gonna aim at this guy. One, two, Oh, okay, you can see a problem here where it's got both things active. I need to fix that. What I've done in order to fix that is I've got an, uh, in my virtual menu, <clears throat> if you look at my commands, I can come all the way down here to my radial menu seven. Remove action set layer, all right? So all you do is you go in here, remove action set layer, and I have that set to left. I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't wanna change anything. But then I come over here and I hit extra command and then I remove action set, set layer right. I give it an icon, let me close that out. And now, because you can see if I hit my X button, it is firing off both of those at the same time. Sometimes, again, beta software, it screws up. I just come down here, I hit fix. It's turned off both of those action layers. And now you can see my X button's doing nothing. But I can uh, hit pull the trigger one, pull the trigger two, pull the trigger three, pull the trigger four. There's my five, there's my six. Pull the right trigger, seven, right trigger, eight, right trigger, nine, right trigger, 10, left trigger, one, left trigger, two, left trigger, three, uh, right trigger, seven, firing off eight, nine. I'm trying to get, uh, oh, I think I killed that thing. That's why it's not working. There we go, F1, F2, F3, F4, and if I had an F5 ability, I would hit double up in order to hit F5. And that gives me the ability <clears throat> to use all of those buttons, and if I'm pulling the trigger, I can aim with the, with the gyro. So if I wanna hit my eight ability right now, I just go that and that, and I'm gonna hit nine, and it, re it works incredibly well. I'm gonna go ahead and fire off my F1 ability to use up that consumable that I have. And there you have it, that's my combat. And I think I've gone through all of my setup for Guild Wars 2. So that's my Steam Deck layout for Guild Wars 2. I've shared it on the Steam community. I think I called it Nerd Nest GW2. If you search for it, you'll find it. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know what you would change. That always makes for a good update later. If people do good suggest, give good suggestions, then I can make those changes and improve upon it. Uh, if you've watched the video for this long, then you probably enjoyed it. So do me a favor, click on like, and if it's your first time here, please subscribe and click the bell. Um, I'm gonna leave a video right here that will teach you how to make the radial menus that I showed you in this video. And I'm gonna do a little experiment. We're gonna let YouTube pick a video that they think would be best for you. And that's gonna be right here where my hand is. Let me know in the comment section down below which video that YouTube suggested for you. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody.